It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Weekly Media Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, and I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news with an addition on deck tonight uh, where we'll break down the tragic fire in Demerston that happened Monday. We'll talk about the latest from Vermont Yankee, including Entergy's deal with the state and what the Public Service Board thinks about it. Uh, we'll also uh, get you some video and photos from a Shackleton-like escapade at the I-91 bridge construction site. All that and more. I'm going to do it in 15 minutes and I can sense a rapid fire edition coming on. So we'll probably even do it in a little bit less than 15 minutes. So if you've got the time and the attention span, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this January 10th, 2014 edition of 545 Live. That's footage courtesy of longtime PCTV producer Catherine Turnis, whose monthly live showcase played host to members of the Brattleboro Music Center and Northern Roots Festival last night uh, on an episode that included interviews, musical histories, and plenty of live performances, all in prep for the full festival, which rolls into town this coming January 25th for an all-day event, followed by specialty uh, items on the agenda that include an informal pub sing performances at McNeil's Brew Pub in downtown. That's something that 545 Live correspondent Yada Clausen was on hand to gather footage of last year. Make the stars be good times or else we would not sing. Hokey pokey penny a lokey takes before you buy. Sing it all. All right, we're going to launch into the local headlines now and uh, make our first stop the tout.com channel of the Brattleboro Reformer, where uh, Reformer reporters and photographers can now upload short videos from the field uh, as they report on the go. And start by taking a look at footage of construction equipment frozen into the river at the base of the I-91 bridge uh, off Route 30, where rising water levels coupled with plummeting temperatures has left much of the machinery stashed there frozen into the ice Shackleton style. Workers are attempting to take the ice away from a machine that's been trapped under ice blocks. And the reformer was also on hand yesterday to gather footage of the grand opening ceremony from the new Aldi's Discount Grocer on Putney Road in Brattleboro, which hosted a lively outdoor ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate the store's debut in Brattleboro, the third of its kind in the state of Vermont, landing an open business uh, in the former plaza of Kipling Cinemas, the longtime Brattleboro Cineplex uh, establishment that was bulldozed earlier this year to make way for the discount grocery store structure. All right, and with that, it's time to move on in the headlines. Lines now. Moving on, area residents have seen their share of epic fires in the past few years, with high-profile cases like the Brooks House remaining a story to this day, and images uh, continuing from the apartment complex destroyed by fire on Elliott Street this uh, past October. But none of those fires have had the tragic spin of uh, this week's blaze in Demerston, as a fire that broke out at a schoolhouse road residence early Monday morning claimed the lives of a father and son residing there, Russell and Barry Nutbrown, making it the most costly fire in recent memory. And while Vermont State Police have officially reported no signs of foul play, the cause of the fire remains under state investigation. All right, from there we'll move on in the headlines with a look at Brattleboro's weekly independent newspaper, The Commons, and start with the latest from Olga Peters, who outlined this week the upcoming candidate positions as we inch ever closer to town meeting day. Here's her article, if we can uh, take a look at that here. 
As the new year begins, the annual ritual of collecting signatures to get on the town ballot has begun. Town Clerk Annette Cappy announced last week that town elections will be held on Tuesday, March 4th, and the annual representative town meeting on Saturday, March 22nd. Petitions for Brattleboro Town and Town School District officers, along with town meeting members, are now available at the town clerk's office. Petitions for town officers must contain at least 30 valid signatures of registered Brattleboro voters and be filed in the clerk's office no later than 5 p.m. on Monday, January 20th. 27th in order to have uh, their names placed on the ballot. Petitions of new candidates must be fill, filed no later than 5 p.m. on January 27th. Incumbents for town meeting member must return their notice of intent uh, by 5 p.m. on Monday, January 20th, one week sooner than the deadline for new candidates. And you can read more of the specific races and uh, specific seats open uh, in Olga's article at commonsnews.org. For more uh, on the subject in general, we spoke with town clerk Annette Cappy herself. You do, that's really all we're looking for are candidates who, who care about where they live, where they make their home, and actually have an opportunity to change what happens in your life. Town Clerk Annette Cappy discussing this upcoming town meeting election season. Now for more on the ever enticing notion of making a bid for public office, we turn now to the latest member of our 545 Live team. He's the on-screen personality behind the TV series Let's Talk About Mental Health, which runs in a half-hour slot live each and every week on BCTV Channel 8 at 6.30 p.m. He also happens to be our current affairs analyst at 545 Live and a good personal friend of mine, Robert Stack. Now, Robert, uh, thanks for joining us via split screen here as always I'm gonna do that thing where I put you on the screen but then just continue to talk here no, I'm only kidding I'll uh, let you get to it here you are uh, a veteran of public office uh, for those um, folks out there considering oh, throwing yeah. their name in the hat uh, what do you make of it oh yeah and I, I actually watched last year's uh, town meeting in Brattleboro which was a marathon and just went on for hours I mean it was like it was incredible and I thought it was great and at the end they, they couldn't even figure out whether or not to go to supper I mean it was like, <laughs> it was like you know and, and I guess you know one of the reasons you and I have talked about this is that you know the, right about now is when you have to go out and get your petition signed if you want to run for office and and uh, and I remember when I ran for school board, I had to go to my neighbors to get them a sign. And I was almost embarrassed. I was like, you know, well, who do you think you are? You know, you're going <laughs> to. But, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's sort of like the more people in the process, the more people that you have talking, um, different backgrounds, different ideas. I, th I think you come out with a better product. I mean, um, I think America is a better place the more we include people. Robert, thanks for joining us. Catch Robert uh, along with area psychiatrist Nils Kloster each and every week on BCTV Comcast Channel 8 at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for their uh, live call-in series, Let's Talk About Mental Health. All right, continue in the headlines here and uh, for that back into the stories. Moving on, for local residents, next week may hold a key final opportunity to voice concerns regarding the future of the Vermont Yankee nuclear power plant site before the Public Service Board. As next Tuesday, members of the public will be given a chance to ask their questions to the board via teleconferencing through the local branch of Vermont Interactive Television, whose studios at Brattleboro Union High School will provide a means of electronic open forum next Tuesday night, starting at 7 p.m. Something we now turn to the Safe and Green Campaign's Leslie Sullivan Sachs for more on. The Vermont Public Service Board will be holding a hearing on Vermont Yankee. It's going to be done via um, statewide via interactive television. Locally in Brattleboro, it will be at Brattleboro Union High School on Fairground Road. It's at 7 o'clock in room 125. Now you may remember the Public Service Board's hotly anticipated ruling on the continued operation of Vermont Yankee uh, was left at kind of an afterthought this past August in the wake of uh, Entergy Nuclear's announcement that they would be voluntarily closing their Vermont Yankee plant this coming fall. But uh, with that very plant's uh, future and the future of the remaining nuclear waste still up in the air, the Public Service Board has called into question elements of the state's deal with Entergy, uh, the details of which can now be found at reformer.com, where uh, little items like a potential $2 million a year in economic development money for Wyndham County do provide some cause for celebration, while other parts of the deal, like the four years of federally backed time Entergy has been granted uh, just to determine the cost of the decommissioning 
still have public officials and affinity group members alike. More than a little concern. Now you can get uh, all the details of that deal between Entergy uh, Nuclear and the state of Vermont in uh, the Reformer article that was uh, posted in today's paper as an insert or head to reformer.com and catch up there as well. Moving on, this year marks the 50th anniversary of President Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty announcement as this week's first Wednesday lecture at Brooks Memorial Library paid tribute to one of the initiative's most successful programs. What if Poor Women Ran the World tells the story of nine sub-poverty line union maids in Las Vegas who, in 1964, took control of their own welfare system and, quote, built a long-lasting, vibrant, anti-poverty program run by poor mothers. Politicians are so reluctant to use the word poverty now uh, that it's almost lost its meaning. So I think it's a really good moment for us to start thinking about saying the P word. Uh, and using it all the time, um, and thinking about creative approaches. Catch that full First Wednesday lecture series and all other uh, First Wednesdays, uh, courtesy of hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez. You can find them all uh, to stream at your leisure in both standard and high definition at brettleborotv.org. All right, we're just about wrapped up here for this edition of 545 Live, but as is customary, we'll take a look ahead at some of this weekend's upcoming events, and we'll do it in the form of a interactive, hosted, clickable link type calendar series all sponsored by the Brattleboro Savings and Loan and hosted by yours truly. It goes up on the web each and every Thursday. You can also catch a clip of it right now on 545 Live. Let's roll it. Take it away, Roland. From there, we'll move on and talk about Ecstatic Vision, the Brattleboro Concert Choir uh, Spectacle. It's got two performances uh, this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and then a matinee-esque 3 p.m. showing on Sunday of the highly anticipated concert series event. One will highlight more in the Spotlight video now. <laughs> There's a fundraiser, pun intended, for the Brattleboro Overflow Shelter that's uh, going on this Saturday, the 11th evening time. Let's roll the details now. It has been an honor and a privilege to, to house our homeless. Um, it's just been amazing how, how wonderful these folks are, how they teach me, have taught me, how caring they are. All right, that does it for another edition of 545 Live, but we'll be back all next week with a series of web content uploads throughout the week that you can find at brittlebrotv.org or by subscribing at youtube.com slash brittlebrotv or join us uh, the good old-fashioned way right here live on Comcast Cable Television or here on Channel 8. We'll see you next week at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time Sharp. In the meantime, stay safe out there and enjoy the week. We'll see you next time.